For 15 years, these have been the only sim pedals that I've used. These are the original G25 first production run that came out to Australia. I had pre-ordered this thing and these have been flawless. They have worked without having to fiddle with them for 15 years. I've never had to open them and clean out the potentiometers. I did eventually replace the brake with the true brake pedal, uh, which gives a nice sort of Formula Ford pedal feel, a lot like a Formula Ford pedal. It's got a little bit of uptake, and then it takes about 40, 45 kilos of foot pressure to fully compress that. So that's more than enough to do heel toe and nicely pivot off of that into the throttle. So these have been fantastic. They've shown no sign of wear. If you look at these things, they are pretty much pristine. Stainless steel has held up pretty well. A couple of little rust spots. The pedal plates look immaculate still. And frankly, these have another 15 years in them. I was looking quite uh, closely at a whole bunch of different uh, candidates, if you will. Um, the Husenvelk sprints come up all the time. The Mecha Cup ones were right on my short list. But what I ended up going with was Oh, these guys from Sim Magic. Oh, okay, so these are the Sim Magic P2000s. Uh, this is the 200 kilo variant. I'm pretty sure that's the only one they're selling at the moment. If I'm going to use something for 15 years, I do not care about the presentation of, of the box. Um, but we're going to take a look in here because it actually is it's quite neat, and it, there's a lot more going on than there was with the, uh, the the Alpha Mini that I got, which was just like box in a box basically but this is this is some quite nice presentation so we're going to take a bit of a look in this and and some overview of the hardware if you will now uh, crack this guy open so it's got your usual cardboard flappy bits this is the carbon uh, heel rest which is a lovely little piece of hardware ah. all it is is a carbon plate that's that's what the heel rest is um, but it's made of this really lovely like satin finished carbon fiber that's also used for the, the shifter paddles, the clutch paddles, and the faceplate on the GT1 R rim. So yeah, it just ties in beautifully with that. Um, it's really soft finish for, uh, for carbon fiber, really nice edges. And there's no spiky bits. Um, yeah, it's just beautiful smooth. And we'll see how it lasts. Um, I'm expecting it to probably show somewhere but you've seen my g25 pedals they're pl black plastic and they look like new at the heel rest area so hoping this will hold up um, so that's fantastic <sighs> and then the first thing you see in the box is this guy here which is the aluminium base plate which is a slab of a thing god look at that um, you can get some steel base plates so i was looking at the mecha cup ones which comes with a steel base plate um, this is very dense aluminium. It basically feels like steel. Uh, it's very, very hard. It's got, it's got like a softer feel to it, but it's still, for aluminium, it's got a very hard finish to it. And as you can see, we've got a hell of a lot of adjustment on these, uh, on these pedals here. Um, so looking forward to playing around with that a little bit. I'm going to bring my, my brake pedal across a little bit towards my throttle a bit, give myself a bit more space on that clutch. Um, but yeah, you can set it up however we want for two pedal sets, three pedal sets, whatever. So that's fantastic. Two, that's not gonna go anywhere. Pop him out of the way. Then we've got this uh, cardboard, giant cardboard operations guide thing. Um, it's got all the measurements for the base plate and things on it and the pedal measurements. So you can see that they're 258 millimeters tall and the bases are 34 millimeters wide, blah, 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 blah. That's cool. And then we've got the first layer here, which is just the uh, pedal faces and the brake pedal here. And these are the, uh, these are the standard pedal faces. Um, you can see they've got like a height adjustment range on the back of them so you can move them up and down. And the front is like this uh, sort of uh, CD finish, if you will, to it. Uh, nicely machined edges, everything is super smooth. And the, the black finish is like a really hard black anodization. And they're, again, very, very dense material. Um, it feels much harder than a standard aluminium. Um, and hopefully it'll wear quite nicely too. So that's those. And this is the long throttle pedal which I got. Um, I wanted to be able to heel toe a little bit easier. Typically you get three of these, so that'd be quite a little small target to, to push for with the heel. You'd have to sort of use the side of your foot a bit higher. But uh, yeah, we'll put that guy on. And then you've got just your, your main pedals here. So this is the, uh, the brake pedal assembly in here. Um, we'll have a 
bit of a bigger look at that later when the whole thing gets put together. But I'm just gonna pull out this, uh, this is the throttle pedal assembly, right? And so this is a, a oil damper unit with an adjustable bump value on it. So we can adjust the bump rate. And there's also a coil spring in here, as far as I can tell from, judging from how little stiction there is, it's not an air spring, it's a, uh, it's a coil spring in an oil tube. And that gives you this really nicely sort of damped throttle. Um, and you can crank it up to uh, like five or six, it goes all the way up to six here. And then that you get this much more damped uh, sort of press, but the release is still just as fast. Um, but most people run this at around three or four and that just sort of feels uh, nicely analog, I guess is the, is the idea. And um, yeah, looking at the rest of this, it's all machined aluminium still. Uh, we've got these like little markers here on the side, which indicate uh, sort of uh, pedal resistance. The higher you put this up, the uh, higher you raise this pivot point, the more spring uh, leverage you'll have on here. So uh, higher up is a stiffer spring basically. And that's how you adjust the spring rate on a sealed spring. Uh, no replacing this spring. At the bottom here, you can see like the load cell. So all three pedals are load cells with these guys. Um, I like load cells for all pedals uh, over hall effect sensors or what have you because uh, very, very consistent. As soon as you've got a little coil spring in there, you can you get a very nice linear response to pedal travel, if you will. Uh, so like a one centimeter per kilo spring means that at two centimeters, you've got two kilos, three centimeters, three kilos. So it's very, very easy to uh, design that way and very consistent and long lasting. And um, lastly, the pivot point on this has been redesigned since the last time I've seen them. Um, and if you've seen other reviews, people will complain about the, uh, the lateral wobble in this pedal face. We'll have a look at it more when it's mounted, but it seems to have very, very little movement in there, if any at all. So it appears that they've done a redesign on that aspect of the pedal. There have been reports of leaks on the throttle and on the brake, but um, apparently those have been addressed. We'll see how we go. I, I appear to have the latest revision of all of the hardware, so this is the clutch pedal. So I'll put that guy back in his little box. And uh, on this one, we've got like a little coil spring uh, and then this groove track in here, which has a knee in it. And of course that will change the spring rate as soon as it drops over the knee. So we're gonna have a linear spring and then we're gonna hit that and it's gonna depress. And it's actually not too bad of a clunk because this is all uh, machined aluminium. It's actually less of a clang than it would be if it was steel or something. So a lot of like the Hoosink Fells and everything are made out of laser cut steel. Steel is great stuff, but I, I do prefer this machined aluminium look to that laser cut steel. Instead of looking like a Meccano set, uh, it does look like a purpose built pieces of, of, of metal, you know? Um, so yeah, it looks very nice. And I was expecting that to be louder. There's a bit of a return clang actually. which we probably can fix by fitting a uh, rubber stopper to the end of this. I think I'm gonna put like a couple of O-rings on there or something to soften that return because it is a bit of a, bit of a clang. Hmm. What we've got in here is a uh, pile of spring options for the brake and the clutch. We've got, we're gonna end up with three different clutch spring options and you get a big pack of uh, of brake springs to go with. You've got four in there and there should be two on here. Um, so let's pull the brake now. Oh, and have a look at this guy. It's a two piece system. Oh. So what we've got here is the uh, master cylinder over here with the pedal on it. And we've got an overflow tank in the top here. Uh, this actually does run, I think dot five or, I don't know if it's dot four or dot five. Uh, fluid, but it is real brake fluid. I would have preferred if they'd gone with a mineral oil that was non-volatile and non-hygroscopic. Uh, um, I don't like having to replace my oil because there's water in it. And I do live in a, a humid country, uh, would be putting it lightly. And at this end here, we have the slave cylinder and then the spring stack and the load cell sits at the top. I'm not sure why they've mounted the load cell to the top of this guy. I would have put the load cell at the bottom of the stack because the problem you have with coil springs and a, a, a free spinning piston like this is 
if you cycle this up and down, the load cell could have a tendency to rotate like this as it's compressed and decompressed. It'll slowly rotate. And because you've got this cable here, it could start to slowly wrap. I've seen some people having that kind of problem. I'm not sure how fast it's going to rotate, but I feel like if this were at the bottom of the stack, uh, you could have it keyed into the slave cylinder so that's not going to go anywhere, no matter how many times you repeat that cycle. We'll see if it becomes a problem and then I can address it. And of course, uh, there are a couple of uh, leakage issues that people have had with this system, uh, namely around the piston seal at the master cylinder. But um, again, mine appears to be bone dry. That hasn't come with any fluid falling out of it anywhere. And it has been shipped from China, so uh, it's looking okay for now. Um, okay, and we've got an adjustable on this stack. We can replace these springs. You've got a preload adjustment on the top here as well. And um, we're gonna have a bit of a play around with all of those. So this all looks very fantastic and it uh, feels very good. And it's gonna be impossible to press that spring in my hand. I guess the last thing to talk about is the little controller box that this guy comes with. Um, so it's very, very simple. We've got four ports on the end here and a USB out on the other end. Um, as you can see here, it's clutch, brake, throttle, and handbrake is on here. Uh, SimMagic has not released their handbrake yet, but it has popped up, like images of, of it have popped up in the new SimPro software, which is their all-in-one software for wheels, wheelbases, pedals, and everything. It's all getting managed through one uh, one bit of software now with profiles you can automatically load per game. So no matter which sim you jump into, it'll now automatically load a profile for all of your hardware, um, which is pretty cool. But uh, again, the handbrake hasn't been even been announced, but there's a picture of it now in the software you can have a look at. It looks okay. I might uh, consider it when my eBay handbrake craps out. Um, and oh, obviously seeing how we go with these. Uh, the one weird thing about this, uh, this box here is uh, mounting it is kind of like an afterthought. I guess they want you to put it somewhere where it's away from any kind of EMI, which is why they give you the flexibility to just mount it anywhere. But they, they give you a little bit of double-sided tape and you just like find a spot and just like stick it to the underside of your rig somewhere, somewhere away from your uh, power supplies and whatnot to uh, counteract any sort of interference that you may have. So that's a look at the, uh, at the SimMagic P2000s. I will be building this, sticking it in my rig, replacing my G25 pedals. They will be retired to my Player 2 rig, uh, along with the old G25 wheel. So long, thanks for all the fish. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll see you guys on the other side when this is all set up. And uh, we'll see how we're getting on with brand new pedals after 15 years.